Today I'm here to share with you my finished slip stravaganza shawl, a finished spinning project, and a finished weaving project. I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits, a video cast about knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn and you can visit me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and if this is your first time viewing Pineapple Knits, welcome. I'm so happy you're here and I hope you enjoy the episode. I'm coming to you today from coastal South Carolina where it is gray and rainy. We are having a tropical storm blow over us coming up from Florida. So yeah, hopefully this will be the last one of the year because it is mid-November and it's crazy to have storms this time of year, but sometimes that just happens. We can't control it. So uh, it'll be rainy probably the next couple of days, but most likely no damage, uh, no strong winds, anything like that. So uh, in the next few days it'll be gone and hopefully we'll return to somewhat seasonable weather. It's been very warm and humid the past couple days before the storm came. So I will welcome drier air and a little bit cooler, more seasonable air for sure. <laughs> so this has been a really busy week. I have just been finishing up projects, which has felt so good. And the largest of all my projects is right back here on my mannequin. And I did, I brought back the mannequin, which I've had in so many episodes, but I finished the slip stravaganza shawl. So let me get it off and I'll show you. So here it is. I finished this. When did I finish this? I think on the weekend and it had a very long I-cord bind off on the chevron side and then it's just been blocking for the past several days and so it is all dried all ready to go and i already have a finished object pro uh, photo taken i haven't taken a photo with myself because this is a really massive shawl and i have no idea how to style it to be honest <laughs> and it's really warm really really warm so let me go ahead and show you just kind of walk you through the shawl. Uh, the project, the pattern name is Slip Stravaganza. It was a mystery knit along by Stephen West and I've been knitting it for the past four to five weeks. And so um, every week there was a new section of the shawl released and so no one knew what the finished object was going to look like and it did not disappoint. It is so fun. It used four different colors of yarn the main color is this caramel brown tone. This is what I chose. And I actually dyed up kits for this. Uh, the colors were the summer kit and the autumn kit. This obviously is the autumn kit. <laughs> and they were in my shop at pineappleyarn.com. I think I may have two kits left of the summer colorway, which was really, really fun. Um, and of course, in hindsight, seeing those colors and how they would work with this pattern, it'd be so pretty. So this was clue one this top V section and it is a basically a pyramid of striped honeycombs. Honeycombs are just this really cool striped stockinette with alternating colors and then the pearl sections are the outlines of the honeycomb so it just turned out really textural and colorful at the same time. The stitches were then picked up making these giant holes and this really great slip stitched border using two different colors was stitched all around the honeycomb section. We then began the diamond section, which is this really neat slip stitched section right here. It's, it looks like stained glass, it's so pretty. And the slip stitches create this really neat diamond motif in between all the different colors. And then this section here used two different colors and it was 
Um, it definitely had some slip stitches as well. I, I think almost every section had slip stitches, which is really cool. I liked this section because I really, really love this kind of neon cantaloupe. It's kind of a deep neon color. And so the contrast of these two is really pretty. And then we had these short row triangles all along the edge, these orange, mine were orange. And then the short rows created these really neat yarn over sections. So you can see those holes in there, just so neat. And then along those triangles, all that was picked up and made into chevrons. <laughs> And then there was a very, very, very long I-cord bind off at the edge. So the only, I, I knit the small version and so my chevron sections are only, they only repeat the colors once, as you can see. <laughs> but I'm really happy I did this. It's a massive shawl, obviously, it's huge. And um, the only thing that I did differently on this shawl is with the I-cord bind off, because I wanted to make sure to have enough give to give me some options in when I went to block the shawl, I actually sized up two needle sizes. So uh, initially in the pattern, I sized down to a US size three. Uh, the pattern calls for a US size four. And so I went down to a three, and then I actually went up to a five to do the I-cord bind off just because in the past, when I've done I-cord bind-offs, uh, it doesn't work out very well as far as just, it's not very stretchy, which is great because it holds its shape really well and it's just a beautiful finish and it's a beautiful bind-off, but um, it gives you limited options as far as how aggressively you can block the shawl at the end. So of all the Stephen West shawls I've done, I would have to say this was the easiest to block. <laughs> all I did, was um, I soaked my finished project with a color catcher and some tuft woolens wool wash. And I think this one is, um, I think this scent is something woods. It's so good though, it smells so good. And all I did, uh, I guess I should go back and say that I used the color catcher on all of my multicolored projects. Um, because many, many years ago, <laughs> it wasn't my yarn. It was um, a couple of different indie dyers I'd used in a multicolor project and they bled on each other and it was just really disappointing. So, and I'm, I would never, I, I don't think, I, it wasn't their fault. You know, the water, everyone's pH in their water is different and that in itself can cause yarn to bleed and so, I had no problems when I was knitting it with like crocking, rubbing off on my fingers. So I think it was just the pH of my water was different than the dyers. It was just really disappointing. So long story short, I always use a color catcher in my multicolored projects. Um, I definitely recommend investing in some because it's, it's so worth it. You don't want your project ruined. Anyway, back to blocking. <laughs> All I did, I laid it out on the floor and I blocked this triangular section and I didn't aggressively block it, but also I did pin it. And so I'd say it's just kind of a medium block. It was enough to open up all these sections and really let them bloom, but um, I, I just, I didn't aggressively block it. There was no need to because it is quite a dense fabric and um, laid it out and just kind of spread the shawl out where it wanted to go. So it laid out on the floor in kind of a crescent, almost a full crescent shape like this. That's where it wants, that's the natural shape of the shawl. And then I did pin the chevrons, but only the tips of them. And so again, not aggressively. There's so much fabric in this. There was just no need to aggressively block it and it, there wasn't any lace sections or anything like that. And so it was really fast to block. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's perfect for autumn. It's perfect. Thanksgiving's coming up. I think it looks like a turkey wing or like a turkey tail. That's what I was going to say, a turkey tail, like all fanned out. That's what it reminds me of. 
<laughs> I don't know if that's the look I was going for, but that's just what it reminds me of. But it was such a fun project and a very interesting pattern. It was just really such a great knitting project. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, the only problem is figuring out how to wear it. <laughs> so let me show you how I think it would be best worn. Of course, if you, I think it would be better if you were a little bigger than me. Honestly, I think it would fit better, but let me just show you real fast. All right, so I had to put my microphone back on, but I just wanna show you what I did. I draped it across this shoulder first and then draped the majority of it around this shoulder and around the back. I think it, because it is a crescent shape, I think it looks pretty good. I probably wouldn't wear this color of shirt with it. <laughs> That's okay. So I think I would do something like that. I know this doesn't look perfect, but um, yeah, I think this is how I'd wear it. Of course, you can wear it as a scarf. That might look good. It fits really well across the shoulders like this. And so you could style it something like that. That's kind of cool too with the honeycomb right here. That looks kind of neat. This is usually my default in wearing shawls as I put the largest part around the front and then just drape the ends this way. I think that's how a lot of people wear their shawls when they're going to wear them as scarves. I don't think it really does justice to this pattern. Actually, that kind of looks neat. So you have the honeycomb up here. I don't want to mess with it too much and bump my microphone. But that actually looks kind of neat because you see all that chevron. So anyway, that is that. That is the slip stravaganza pattern. It's finished. I love it. It was so fun and I'm just so impressed with myself that I kept up with all the clues and I kept going. <laughs> so this was really fun and hopefully I'll be able to get a lot of wear out of it in the future. So this may be the day, the episode of finished objects because I have two more finished objects to share with you. The first finished object or the next finished object I should say is my finished spin and it is this beautiful Rambouillet three-ply oh my goodness tell me that is not the most stunning yarn and colors yes I am very biased because I worked really hard on this <laughs> Okay, but in all seriousness, um, my whole objective when I spun this yarn, I really wanted to do a true th three ply, not a chain ply, but an actual three ply, very finely spun. And I really wanted to work on consistency. And so it was so painful in the end. I'm telling you, it was so painful in the end because I just wanted to get through this project. It took a long time for me. It felt like such a long spinning project. I have so much other fiber I want to spin. And, you know, I, it's so funny because I began spinning with the idea that I wanted to create sock yarn. I wanted hand knit socks and I have knit zero pairs of hand knit socks since I started spinning and it's not for lack of fine yarns but it's just I, I realized that that isn't what drives me to spin I love texture I love color and a lot of times like I don't so a lot of times I really don't want to spend with super wash I just don't like the the feel of it. And with socks, I need super wash. I mean, I don't need super wash, but 
it probably is the best option. <laughs> and so um, when I spin with something like Rambouillet, I could make socks out of this, but I don't think I will. I don't want socks to be ruined um, when I worked so hard on this yarn. So let me give you some stats on it. This fiber is from Three Waters Farm. It's called Summer Palette. It's a beautiful blend of reds. It kind of like cranberry reds, rusty oranges, mustard yellows, uh, greens, kind of like a moss green, um, bright turquoise. And I split this into, it was dyed in three equal parts. I split it into three equal parts and then stripped two of those parts lengthwise and offset them so it would be a fractal spin so none of the colors lined up. All in all, I was successful with the fractal spin. So the third portion of that fiber, I did not split in strips lengthwise. I actually broke all the chunks of color apart and then spun each color by itself. So I had a long section of cranberry, a long section of rust orange, etc. So yeah, it turned out really well. And the yardage on this was crazy. I, there's so, there is so much yardage in this. So after I soaked the finished yarn in lukewarm water and a wool wash, I hung it up to dry. I actually hung it up to dry in my drying room. I'm so spoiled having a drying room in the studio, <laughs> but this came out very springy and the, the, it's so elastic. It's just, it's wonderful. It's so squishy. It turned out really well. And so the finished stats on this, I ended up with 3.8 ounces, 108 grams, and that equaled out to 548 yards, which is really crazy. It doesn't look like this, but it is a lot of yarn. And the way I prepped the fiber is it was just so airy. Um, I should have known that I would get a tremendous amount of yardage from this, even though it's a three ply. It's about 15 wraps an inch. So I would say it's about a sport weight. Um, I could be wrong. I mean, it's not the most consistent yarn in the world, but um, it's a pretty, I think it's just a little bit large, bit, a little bit fluffier than fingering weight. Um, maybe like a heavy fingering or sport weight maybe. Um, but yeah, it was just tremendous yardage. But the, the again, the way I prepped it was just so airy that um, it had air at its core. And so the fiber was just going to go further than if I did a super, super dense, uh, maybe a dense prep, something like that. Um, I spun this short backward draft with smoothing. So even though I must have just not smoothed it a lot because it really is very lightweight yarn, um, very airy, but it does, I guess I just smoothed it in enough to smooth some of the outside fibers down, if that makes sense. I don't know. But the grist on this was 2,302 yards per pound. I, I actually made sure to measure my yarn swift. Um, I have an electronic, it's a motorized swift winder or yarn yarn swift, and I measured and made sure it was two, it's a giant, <laughs> giant winder, but it's, I double checked to make sure it was two yards around, and it was. I always set it at two yards. It's just easier to calculate yardage. And sure enough, it was, so I try not to wind yarn too tightly either. I don't know if this yarn kind of got stretched out maybe a little bit and that's what increased the yardage. I just don't know. Um, I've been doing this for a while, you know, just measuring the yarn and using the same equipment. And so I don't know. I would have to measure this and see if it did get stretched out because that just seems like a, a lot of yardage. But that's my finished stats and that's what I got. So um, if you have any input, I will gladly <laughs> hear it and consider it because I am definitely still learning with my spinning. Um, I've only been spinning for 
maybe two years now, three years, I can't remember, but not that long in the grand scheme of things. So I'm constantly learning new things. And um, if you ever have any kind of comments or advice, I will definitely, I would definitely love to hear it and definitely take it into consideration. So I feel like this was a success. I don't know what I'll make from it. I will probably, I was actually thinking it would be beautiful in some kind of color work, especially if maybe this was the background and then using like a more tonal color for the foreground or vice versa, it would look really neat. So someday it will become a project, but until then it will go into my yarn stash. <laughs> My final finished project I'd like to share with you are, it's a weaving project, and it is all of these waffle weave dishcloths. <laughs> and um, if you have been following the podcast for a little while, you'll know that I did weave these up the same pattern um, a while ago in a kind of a mustard yellow. It's actually the same yellow that's in here, a soft yellow color. And this pattern is the Thick Textured Dish Cloths by Sherry Wheeler Designs. I purchased this on Etsy and I'll link it below. It's a really great beginner weaving pattern. Um, I think it's one of those things where when you are, you may remember when you were a beginning knitter, you had no idea how to calculate a hat, to make a hat or a cowl. And so you needed those beginner patterns. So, and now that you've been knitting for a while, you can calculate a hat pattern, no problem, or a cowl or a scarf. And so that's where I'm at with weaving. I am brand new. And so I am so happy to have these beginner patterns that just kind of walk me through what I'm supposed to do and what yarn to use. And so I highly recommend this pattern. I wove this on my Krumsky Presto 10 inch loom. And so another thing that's really great is this pattern is perfect for one of those teeny tiny 10 inch looms. And um, it's a practical pattern. You can give these as gifts. It's so great. So what I did, and it's very simple. It's this waffle weave here. Let me give you a close up. So what I did on all of the cloths is I warped the loom with all these colors. So the white color is called maybe Swan. It's like a natural cotton color. This is creme brulee, blush pink, and kenai, which is this beautiful teal color. This is all uh, Knit Picks Dishy on their cones. Tons of yardage, worsted weight, just workhorse yarn. So as you can tell here, I did the same amounts of color in the weft and made this really cute plaid pattern. But I am definitely a project, project knitter, project weaver, even though I do like the process of weaving a lot, but I just want to get it done sometimes. <laughs> and so for instance, this cloth, what I did here is the entire weft is the creme brulee. And so really that yellow dominates on this cloth, but you get the really pretty stripes. And I thought that was pretty. Same with this one, except I use Kanai. I use that beautiful deep teal. And I really like that. Um, I think I did mention because I showed this unfinished a while back. I don't even remember when it was. So my hold up with this I love this deep teal, but I wasn't sure how the darker color would perform in the kitchen, you know, wiping counters, um, etc. because I had used the Dishy Twist and it was a black and white yarn. And I don't know what was going on with that, um, but I have these beautiful black and white knitted dishcloths that I've been using and they shed all the time. Even though I've pre-washed them, I've washed them so many times and I still get little bits of black lint on my counter. So it may just be that yarn. I normally don't use a dark yarn when I knit or weave these dishcloths. So I'll be really interested to see how this performs because I love that color. I think it's just so pretty. Here I used all white for the weft and I thought that was really pretty. Actually these two, I did all white and I just think that's really, really lovely.
The waffle weave texture is so wonderful. Um, you can't see it as much with the variegated nature of um, all these different colors that I've used, but it is really, it's just a really nice texture. It cleans really well. So here's another white. <laughs> this one I did all pink and I thought that one was pretty. And then this one was my leftover it was my last one. I believe I, I have eight altogether. I'll go back and count. But this one just got, you know, a couple rows of each color. And that's that. That's my leftover one. And so all together, let's see how many this turned out to be. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So I have eight all together in one project. I highly recommend this pattern and this yarn. It's, this is just so fun. I mean, I, I would love to see this as um, you could make dished cloths with holiday colors and give them away. They're a really nice practical gift. You could also use these for, um, for the bathroom. You could definitely use these for washcloths because they are the perfect size for your hand. They're not very big. And honestly, that's why I kind of like them for the kitchen. They dry really quickly because they're 100% cotton. They don't have any synthetics in them. So yeah, I just sat down this weekend and decided I need to hem these finally. <laughs> so I got them done and very glad I did. Um, I'm going to keep a couple, probably, you know, the leftover last one. I'm definitely going to keep the one that is all teal. Where did it go? Oh, this one. I'll keep it just because I want to see how it performs in the kitchen. I don't want to gift that if it doesn't work out really great. Um, so I will be giving these away as gifts, maybe for Christmas or something like that. But yeah, I just wanted to share that project with you and show that they are done. It's so exciting. So that is it for finished projects this week. I don't have, well, I was going to say I don't have anything on the needles, but yeah, I did cast something new on. <laughs> I'll have to show you that next week because it's, it's in the house and I don't want to go back to the house to get it. But um, I do have a couple of hand spun knitting projects that I will be sharing with you next week that are super fun and um, I'm sure you'll like seeing them. But as far as weaving goes, I'm actually weaving up my advent calendar right now. So I can't show you that work in progress and no spin, no current spin. And I cannot wait to start a new one. Um, I know my hedgehog fibers, fiber of the month club is on the way, but I think I'm going to do a club that I, from past months that I haven't spun up yet and save that new one until it gets here. I'll save it so I can show you the unspun fiber because I think that's always fun to see. But that is about it for all of my projects. I have been working towards a shop update this week. So I will be having a shop update this Friday, which is November 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern time at pineappleyarn.com. I will have some seasonal colorways in various bases and I will also have uh, candles in four different scents. And so it'll be a really fun, fun update. And I'll also have some fiber. Um, I think three, I think there's three different types of fiber uh, that will be going into the shop on maybe four colorways or so. So I have a lot of variety of things. And so that's just really fun. I'm glad to be able to keep giving you all the crafty things. Um, yarn shortage is real. I recently, most recently had trouble finding uh, candle supplies, like the little jars that I put my candles in, which is just 2020, right? It's, yeah, it's real. <laughs> but hopefully uh, I will just keep being able to find yarn and find everything. And I really appreciate your patience in trying out new yarn bases and new fibers uh, so I can keep putting things in the shop and um, yeah, keep providing you beautiful things. I love doing this and I hope that you love crafting with them as well. So I'll wrap it up here for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be filming a shop update video after this. So check that out if you're interested in seeing 
all the beautiful yarn and fiber and candles. And I hope your crafting goes so well this week. I hope you're enjoying it. And I will catch you again next week for another episode. But until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye. Bye.